The conscription of troops often necessary on account of the never-ending frontier wars takes place in the following manner. The order goes out that on a certain day in a certain part of town, all inhabitants, men, women, and children, without exception, have to remain indoors. Usually at about noon, the young nobleman in charge of the conscription appears at the entrance of that part of town where a detachment of soldiers, both infantry and cavalry, has been waiting since dawn. He is a young man, slender, not tall, weak, carelessly dressed, with tired eyes, waves of restlessness continually passing through him like a shiver of fever. Without looking at anyone, he makes a sign with a whip, his sole equipment, whereupon several soldiers join him and he enters the first house. A soldier who knows personally all the inhabitants in this part of town reads out the list of the inmates. As a rule, they are all present, lined up in the room, their eyes fixed on the nobleman as though they were soldiers already. It can happen, however, that here and there someone, it's invariably a man, is missing. In this case, no one will dare to utter an excuse, let alone a lie. Everyone is silent. All eyes are lowered. The pressure of the command which someone in this house has evaded is almost unbearable. But the silent presence of the nobleman keeps everyone, nevertheless, in his place. The nobleman makes a sign. It's not even a nod. It can be read only in his eyes. And two soldiers begin the search for the missing man. This is not difficult. He is never out of the house, never really intends to evade military service. It's only fear that has prevented him from turning up, yet it's not fear of the service itself that keeps him away. It's the general's reluctance to show himself for him the command is almost too great, so frighteningly great that he cannot appear of his own accord. This is why he does not flee. He simply goes into hiding, and on learning that the nobleman is in the house, he even leaves his hiding place and creeps to the door of the room where he is promptly caught by the soldiers in search of him. He is brought before the nobleman who seizes the whip with both hands. He is so weak he can't do it with one hand and gives the man a thrashing. Having inflicted no great pain, he drops the whip, half from exhaustion, half from disgust, whereupon the beaten man has to pick it up and hand it to him. Only then may he join the line with the others. Incidentally, it is almost certain that he will not be recruited, but it also happens that this is more frequent that a greater number of people appear than are listed. There, for instance, stands an unknown girl, staring at the nobleman. She is from out of town. From the province, perhaps? The conscription has lured her here. There are many women who cannot resist the temptation of a conscription in another town. Conscriptions at home meaning something quite different, and strangely enough, it is not considered disgraceful for a woman to surrender to this temptation. On the contrary, in the opinion of many, this is something women have to go through, a debt which they pay to their sex. Moreover, it is invariably takes the same course. The girl or the woman learns that somewhere, perhaps very far away, at the home of relatives or friends, a conscription is going to take place. She asks her family for permission to undertake the journey, which is granted. It cannot very well be refused. She puts on her best clothes, is gayer than usual, at the same time calm and friendly. No matter what she may be like at other times, and yet behind all the calm and friendliness, she is inaccessible, like an utter stranger who is on her way home and can think of nothing else. And the family where the conscription is going to take place, she is received quite differently. From an ordinary guest, everyone flatters her. She is invited to walk through all the rooms in the house, lean out of all the windows, and if she puts her hand on someone's head, it means more than a father's blessing. When the family is preparing for the conscription, she is given the best place, which is near the door, where she has the best chance of being seen by the nobleman and can best see him. She is honored in this way. However, only until the nobleman enters, thereafter she begins to fade. He looks at her as little as at the others, and even when his eyes rest on someone, that person is not aware of being looked at. This is something she has not expected, or rather, she certainly has, for it cannot be otherwise. Yet it wasn't the 
expectation of the opposite that had driven her here. It was just something that had now definitely come to an end. She feels shame to a degree which our women possibly feel at no other time. Only now is she fully aware of having forced her way into a foreign conscription and when the soldiers has read out the list and her name is not on it. And there comes a moment of silence. She flees, stooped and trembling out of the door, receiving in addition a blow in the back from a soldier's fist. Should the person not on the list be a man? His only desire is to be conscripted with the others, although he does not belong to this house. But this too is utterly out of the question. An outsider of this kind has never been conscripted, and nothing of the sort will ever happen.